This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. Hey, what's happening? This is TC Carson, and you are listening to ACMG's Talk Time Live. And this is Kratos. Keep listening. Welcome to the show that gives you all the news, views, and opinions in the world of gaming. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extras, so let's start with your host, that's Xavier Josiah. Power up and game on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extra Select Start. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. Folks, happy Friday to you. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, I am doing this on a Friday because there was so much work going on this week with me and my design firm. So I had to work with client work. Some of them you actually know in the world of anime, comics, movies, and games. And... um, it was just it just came up but i wanted to make sure i get all of that first priorities first business before pleasure and now we're here so we're here to talk about video games of course uh sunday i'm gonna talk about other things like hopefully i can get to see john wick this week if not i do have another thing that i'm gonna review that i absolutely am gonna check out uh that came out this week so uh i'm gonna get a chance to you know do a review this week on talk time live no doubt but we're here to talk video games, and the biggest news that I got this week, it's not its not a lot of news, but the biggest news I got this week was, in fact, the uh, Nintendo Direct special that they did, uh, focusing on Super Mario Maker 2, the sequel to the very deeply played Super Mario Maker 1, which was a very creative thing, and just to be able to create your own Mario level, that's, so, that's, that's uh, something that people dreamed of doing you know for years and now they make it with ease for you to do really goes to show how far we we are in the gaming world well mario maker 2 is even going to add more of what we expected and ever wanted in a creative suite for a mario game this is amazing they it was a believe it's like what was like a 20 minute showcase i believe and um just covered everything that this game will have to offer the game is by the way available now i will probably say that again but it is available now for pre-order let me stress that it's available for pre-order but i think this is worth getting and they got a lot of things going on with this the biggest news i got out of this for me was the story mode feature and i like the fact that they added they're adding story modes to all of their normal franchise everyone except for mario kart i think mario kart would do good having a actual uh story mode too because it's just driving i i i can't lately i've been really tired of driving games it's just an infinite loop of you just going around doing nothing and i mean it's not like you're not doing nothing but it just it gets boring after a while there has to be some type of element or whatever to it or something that gets you from point a to point b and the story mode usually does that you know creating some type of direction or dialogue towards that so hopefully it'll do that for mario kart but now Super Mario Maker actually has a story mode, and this story mode was featuring over 100 levels, which plays as a tutorial. I love this, because when I played Mario Maker, the first one, on the 3DS, I loved playing it, but there was also a method, there was a philosophy to designing a really good level. And this story mode is not only a story mode, but it's also kind of a tutorial to really help you understand the fundamentals of creating a really good well balanced uh level and i really like that idea because much like i do with graphic design or web design or whatever like that or branding of of sorts there's a certain philosophy there's a certain technique and a certain style that you have to really understand to really make it work sometimes it's symmetry it requires symmetry sometimes asymmetry and but the idea is to make sure that it flows and it balances right. So what I also love about this, because all of us that complain, all of us on the outside, whoever complained about certain games that have some like really crappy level design, now they're putting it in our hands and seeing if we actually can, you know, we can, uh, you know, we can put our money in our, uh, what is the term? <laughs> put your money where your mouth is pretty much. So, I like this idea. It gives us a chance to truly understand what 
goes into this process and also maybe even appreciate what these designers have done throughout the years and what Miyamoto has put together through all these years. Well, now, it's not to say we, we now when it comes to, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto, we never had any problems with his designs. Well, maybe Super Mario Brothers U. I wasn't too keen on that one. That to me was I, I really didn't like that one. I was probably the most unentertaining of all the Mario games I've ever played. But for the most part, all of his designs and everything he's ever done always had some type of balance. It wasn't too hard. It wasn't too easy. You know, it was, it, there was a great balance to that. And I think um, they're going to help us with that. So I love the idea of this story mode doing it. It's kind of the same. They did the same thing with uh, Mario Tennis. The story mode was kind of a tutorial mode of teaching us how to actually play the uh, game better. So you had that situation. There also go is going to be a online four-player co-op. Interesting about this is that you ha uh, you can have one Nintendo Switch. Like, say if you got your friends coming over, they, you know, do you do the thing they do in a commercial where all four of you guys have a Nintendo Switch, which is possible. And you got, but only one person, I believe, has a Nintendo Switch. Now, one Nintendo Switch can connect to all four other Switches until... Uh, units when playing together that's pretty cool so not everybody has to you know be on it i don't know if it requires that everybody has to have the game that's the thing that they didn't i don't think they really explained too much i don't think uh that was a situation but i maybe it is because i remember i know playstation has uh the share option that you know you don't have to have a game you can play along with friends as long as one person has that feature that has that game you can play along with the uh other people who even if they don't have the game so i don't know if that's the case with that but it's still a cool idea uh there are massive amounts of additional uh new items and levels to that you could create this time around uh such as the angry sun which is if you guys remember i believe i forgot i don't know if this was mario 3 that i saw this in that uh with the angry sun yeah i believe it is that the angry sun is there but also the snake blocks is back as well now along with the angry sun there is a smiling moon which is like the polar opposite of the angry sun because if you remember the sun when you're in a mario level as it scrolls you know towards right the angry sun will try to come at you and try to kill you and this time the moon which comes out in the nighttime of course if you get it if it hits you it diminishes every enemy that's on the screen at that time so that's a cool little added thing that they add for that one as well i thought that was pretty awesome um custom scroll designs vertical and horizontal has been added new sound effects uh set stage clear conditions which means that in order to beat that stage you set up the way that you need to beat that stage and that is something that wasn't in the first one as well new course themes included desert snow forest and sky has been added share your share your created levels online with course world which is something i believe they had before provided that you are subscribed to nintendo online now even if you're not there, I'll be talking about this uh, in a minute because they have a little special in regards to that. Uh, you also can create courses using the formats of Super Mario 1, 3, and Super Mario World. Interesting as to why Super Mario 2 is not on there. I don't understand why that is not on there. I don't know if that's... I, I really don't understand why it's not on there. I think that really should be on there. I think people in, really enjoyed it, but it played differently from the other Mario. Uh, the The... The algorithm, I guess, if you will, was different from the other Mario games. I don't know why they didn't add it on or could they add it on. Who knows? But that, for some reason, is not on there. Maybe it will add a DLC or not. I don't know. Maybe if people start you know, asking about it, maybe they will. Uh, you can also... Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 now has 3D mode courses, uh, which now allows you to set the creation items, including a buggy. Like, so I guess if you played like the Super Mario Brothers 2 or Super Mario Brother U, which is all in 3D, you'll be able to create it there. Thing is, if you create, the deal is, here's the thing. When you play through the Super Mario Brothers with using the course, the formats of 1, 3, and, and World, because they're 2D flat, you can switch your levels to that. But if you do the 3D World, it won't allow you, it won't transition to that. It'll absolutely make you 
start it all over and you'll erase your, your entire thing. So when you do that, you're going to have to do a completely new board, a new level that you're going to have to design and not based on the one. And it won't allow you to transition to the one, three uh, and world stages uh, format. So uh, but it's still interesting that you got you're able to do 3D stages. It's really going to show the power of the of the Nintendo Switch again by being able to do stuff really cool stuff like that they even had like really they had bullet bills coming towards you uh, as you're coming along and some really cool things but the whole buggy thing was really cool too mario's going to be riding in a in a car and once he's in that car he's going to go real fast and he's going to have to hop through all different levels but it's going to any enemy like goomba or you know um koopa that comes nearby is going to get knocked off <laughs> immediately so I thought that was pretty cool. The game actually will be coming on June 28th, and it will be for $59.99. However, Nintendo is also offering a game voucher, which allows you to buy Super Mario Maker 2 and another game for a discount price. It also offers full year of Nintendo Online. Uh, and if you already have Nintendo Online, it'll stack on to the other year. So it'll just roll it over. And you'll have that of the year for free. So you got that. There also will be a Super Mario Invitational Tournament coming in 2019. Uh, for 2019, coming June 8th. So this is, it literally is going to be... I think I'm actually going to check that out. Because that... Ooh, excuse me. That is... Uh, that's always been a really fun competition. You know, it, it's it's kind of like... An, it's kind of, you, you really watch a Mario competition because they've been doing this for years It's nothing new they've been doing Mario competitions for years and you know you could create your own specific style of Mario levels uh, back then or they would create specific Mario style or, or, I remember I think back in the day in the 80s when they did this when Nintendo Entertainment uh, System was out I think it was a time thing and the score thing as to how much they based it on and I think they're going to up the ante because now you could create your own levels and they're going to try to get people it's going to be even more challenging than ever this time around but they were i always remember them to be really exciting because you know you're you're kind of empathizing with the player on there because you've played it before too and you know it's like there's some cringing moments where you're hoping he could jump uh to that platform or whatever like that so I, i'm actually going to check that out i'm, I'm probably going to definitely uh, check it out when it arrives so stay tuned for that all of you guys who got a chance to play Tetris 99, who have been playing Tetris 99 for since since it debuted, since it released, myself included, have been addicted to that game. So much so that I actually had to get off of that game. I had to force myself off the game so I could play other games. It's very challenging, but it's also very fun to play. It's extremely fun to play. But the one thing that you never get to do, not many people get to make it to number one, I think the closest I've ever made was 16, which is actually pretty good, uh, considering it's 99 people that's all playing at the same time, but I never made it to number one. Well, not to mention, the other thing is, you were always connected to online, and those are the two things that was like, all right, but I wish they had an offline, I, and since, I, since that game came out, I've been looking for an offline version of Tetris, so I can probably practice on it. Well... Our prayers have been answered because Tetris 99 now has an offline DLC and this DLC offers an online mode which now provides five levels of play to help you learn better uh, better ways to strategize. It also now has a marathon mode as well. The game goes for $9.99. Actually, I don't think it's entirely bad and I had to talk with somebody in the group, in our ACMG Facebook group and... He felt it was a little bit too steep. I disagree. I kind of disagree with that, and I, I I do understand what he's getting at. But he wasn't invested in the game. There are people who are actually invested in this game from a competition standpoint, and I love. I've always loved Tetris. Now remember, it's to say that nine ninety nine is really uh, expensive. I don't on the fact that when the Game Boy came out. Well, then again, we got Tetris for free, didn't we? I think Tetris came with that. So that could be an argument there. But even still, a, game, a, a Nintendo Game Boy game was like, what, 30 bucks back then? So this is not entirely bad. Plus, it really is an addictive game. 
and it's a one-time price it's not a ongoing price i will be having a lot of replay um value with this game so i had no problem paying that much now if it was for 20 bucks i would have been like nah i think 9.99 is just about reasonable enough to actually enjoy this game without thinking that it's too steep and if you think that it's too steep well a lot of an argument can be made that you're just not into the game enough but there are people who are constantly in and even now not only that they're they're always having competitions and for tetris lately they are trying to make it into some type of a competition or sport and it, it after playing you know after playing it for like a few months or a couple months i can see why it could be very competitive so i don't think i think that's a reasonable price in my opinion i think it shouldn't go any more than that in my opinion because they're investing a, you could tell they're investing a lot in that game there's a i i do like the strategy that they did because in order for them to probably get people to pay for that amount they would have to show you how really good this game is and how much fun this game is and how addictive this game is and then they get like this was it i i have no doubt in my mind that this game was absolutely in the works to come out as a dlc and i'm not mad at it i am totally i i look it's a great strategy i mean because for all it's worth the game could have been bad the game could have sucked and then they tried to come out with this and if, if the game didn't suck they would not have done this if the game sucked high hell this would not be here they would not be doing a dlc but they see how many they they know the stats they know how many people are playing the game they see people playing the game consistently and we've been i mean there's been people who've been wanting to know how to play this better how to you know there's there's been a lot there's a there's a fan base there's a big fan base out here for this game so i guarantee you that they're making that money they're getting that money back and trust me this is a this is a good thing this is a win for uh for the uh, people behind tetris 99 so it is available right now on the nintendo eShop. if you already own it you own the online version you can easily just buy the dlc and you can play it offline it'll be totally yours it'll be in your drive and your uh your, your uh, sd card and you know you don't have to worry about it now you could play it and not only that the best part about this all you could play it and actually beat the game in number one and you could get it to number one on the easiest mode i can't tell you how satisfying it feels to see that my my whole entire i beat 99 of the computer of the ai it's regardless if it's on easy it still feels good damn it <laughs> so go out of your way to check it out and it does give you a it does help you practice to if you really want to be competitive it does help you practice to really push hard to get out there it's, you know levels one to five five being the you know most intense it'll it'll give you a, enough to go and then you could go into the uh, online competitions and uh you know get at it see how good you really are so there you go enjoy that another dlc a free dlc that will be coming out very soon i'm very happy to hear about this dead cells you guys remember that it was an uh, you know award-winning uh game that uh it was like really big last year i own it i reviewed it it's awesome absolutely awesome dead cells will be releasing a new free dlc for those who already have the game by the way <laughs> of course uh for those who don't there will be they have one on sale they'll be on sale with the original and the dlc of course uh but the dlc is called rise of the giants which means it's an entirely new game pretty much and that will be available on may 23rd pretty much the end of this month or i think next week actually now this actually comes with a new boss a giant of a boss if you've seen the trailer of this they that the boss is huge yeah you're not going to be you're going to die a lot <laughs> in this game again um you know new monsters weapons and challenges the game also will have new fixes to help balance the game and uh, balance the gameplay more and motion twin which is the company behind it has also announced new patches coming for nintendo, um, nintendo switch so if you have not played dead cells this is a really eccentric game uh a very creative beautiful castlevania slash metroid style game that enables you to go through all these mazes mazes run through these mazes but you're gonna die it's inevitable like this is a game that you die so many times but you just 
You don't care because it's just the journey of the game. And eventually, every time you keep coming back, you come back stronger. You come back different. And I love that. I love that aspect of it because it reminds you of life. It's like you you won't you're not going to do the same thing that you did last time. And each time you keep doing it, you're going to get better at it. And eventually, you're going to get ahead. And that's usually pretty much how it is. It's like as long as you're still kicking, you got a better chance of getting. It. And especially if you remember what you did the last time. Message. So, you know, that should be coming out in the 23rd. And uh, I, if you haven't played, if you guys love Castlevania, uh, and speaking of Castlevania, I'll be bringing up that in a few. Um, go out of your way to check this out. These guys did a great job. These indie developers out here are really killing it. What I love about more about indie developers and why I'm such a big fan and why I have some of them on my show is plain and simple. Freedom to create. And that if you've heard any of the actual stories and interviews that I had with some of these indie uh, guys, um, you know, Gentle Brothers, the uh, Trinket Games, the Yacht Club uh, games just recently, that uh, the guys behind Shovel Knight, and now... Um, the new uh, game coming soon and uh, these guys are awesome they were rather former actual uh you know developers or in the yacht club case they just came out of it and did it themselves and you know learned how to do it and you know came up and made a really creative game and you know worked together with a team you know it's pretty much all it takes so i love what these guys are doing and i'm ever so you know amused and excited every year as to what comes out it's really awesome now i got some really really this is going to be wrestling news people so this is a uh, this is this is wrestling game related news but this is huge news if you're a fan of wrestling games like i am i love this i love this i love this if you're in a wrestling if you're a wrestling fan and you obviously have if you're a hardcore wrestling fan you have been living under a rock you know what's going on there's a shakeup, a real shakeup, not like the one that WWE is actually trying to convince us that it is. A real shakeup is going on in the world of professional wrestling, the industry itself, and with an, in the midst of a new company called AEW, which just announced that they will be on TNA this fall. AEW consists of a lot of the former members of the Bullet Club, aka the Elite. That is Kenny Omega, that is Cody Rhodes, that is the Young Bucks, that is Adam Page, and more to come. Trust me. So, what we have here is a big shakeup, which now this new company owned by Tony Khan is coming out to compete with WWE. They're saying it's not a competition, but hell, Unity you know, Crystal Ball predict the obvious. It's a competition. And with that happening, the WWE's morale within its company has been going down because of the bad decisions that the company has been making. And I, when I say bad decisions, I mean that of the owner and CEO, Vince McMahon. And now people are wanting to leave. People are wanting to go out and move on to other opportunities like AEW, like MLW, like Ring of Honor, like New Japan. But I digress. Why am I mentioning this right now? Because not only is this happening in the wrestling industry, it's now happening in the wrestling game industry. WWE, for years, have been using the likes of legendary companies like Aki, which to this day, if you're a wrestling game fan, you know that the Aki engine was legendary. It was stupendous. But unfortunately, the company is now defunct. And as a result, their rivalry company, Ukes, which at the time when they were competing, Ukes' engine was nowhere near as good as Aki. And if you compete, the, if you bring that, uh, that, uh, the Aki engine back today and if they modified it and brought it to the modern, I still think that it could compete heavily with Ukes, what Ukes is doing, despite the fact that Ukes, credit to them, have been doing tremendous with what they've been doing for the WWE wrestling games. And, um, and some of the uh, Japanese games as well back then like uh ultimate muscle and all the stuff but nonetheless they have been the forefront of wrestling games throughout years and licensed by wwe the only company that's been utilizing them for wrestling games it's been crazy um i you know of course wwe 2k19 this year was actually pretty damn good it was like one of the best they've had in years uh and now What's next? WWE 2K20 is coming. 
but what we just found out is that Ux is developing a new wrestling game in the works to compete with the company that they're licensed to, and that is WWE and 2K Games. How did this happen? And I, this is wild. This is wild from a standpoint that I didn't know they get ready were able to do that. And maybe that was just wasn't in the contract, and they didn't think that they were going to absolutely do something like that. It seems like it could be a conflict of interest in some cases, but it seems like it's not, and they are able to do it. Now, why this is happening, I'll explain. Yuke Senior Vice President and Producer Hiromi Furuta announced that in an interview with Video Game Chronicles that they are a development of an established new game with the intention of creating internal competition with WWE 2K, even though they are still making games for the company. That is amazing. Hiromi explains that the uh, that her core WWE team is starting to lose sight of their passion and confidence and becoming focused only on completing assigned tasks, which is not the direction that Ukes wants to go in. Now, I'm going to stop right there on my notes because just off of that alone, these guys are not only developers of a wrestling game, but these guys are also fans of the wrestling industry. I can tell you right now, they've been working on this for years. They're they're absolutely fans of this. I think, and this is what I believe, because this has been the go around for every fan lately of WWE and why they've been losing their ratings. Just based off what she sounded like is that these guys are also tired of what WWE has been doing and they're not as excited about doing a game that they're based on the WWE philosophy anymore. I think they're just as the morale of Ukes has now hit. That's what this sounds like. This sounds like a bunch of developers who are fans of wrestling are suddenly, you know, are just a strut of what's going on. And if I can't, again, if you haven't, if you're not a wrestling fan and you don't know what's going on lately, Vince McMahon has been doing the dumbest, making the dumbest decisions and is in, uh, for the company's history and the show's Raw and Smackdown has reached a all time low in ratings most of this in my opinion has base, is based on not the fact that he doesn't know what he's doing the dude to his credit Vince McMahon is actually a very smart guy in fact people I've said this myself as much as I hate to admit this he's a genius he is a genius promoter. He will probably go down as one of the greatest promoters of all time. Whether that's deserving or not, that's a whole other thing down the line. But what is a fact is that he let his ego get into play. And his ego, his ego has now unfortunately bit him in the ass because now they got new competition with a owner of the of the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars, I believe, Tony Khan, whose family has a ton of cash in fact even more cash than what Vince McMahon has and has the assets to be able and the capital to compete with WWE's product and since that has happened he's been scrambling around trying to figure out how to make a better product his ego got in the way and now he's it the karma's coming back and now his own people are now moving away wanting to leave the company but they're under contract it, it, there's a really bad morale pro, um, part of it. And now it looks like it's, it's being assimilated and transitioned over to Ukes. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Um, the game is in the very early stages right now of development. But we also have uh, ideas for a new game system that we know that will result in, the, uh, in an interesting game. Now, that's interesting. I am wondering if then if they're going to make an attempt to go back to the Nintendo Switch as well to do to redeem themselves with that because again it is not all Yuke's fault. It's more like Blind Squirrel, who was helping to do that, and we talked about this before. Blind Squirrel, I don't know what success what their success rate is, but the first time I've ever encountered them was when they did WWE 2K18 for the Nintendo Switch, and while the game is stable, it is at this time still lackluster due to the fact that the frame rate just absolutely is awful 
it is probably still one of the worst. Unfortunately, even though it's playable, it is still possibly one of the worst games on the Nintendo Switch. And it's like that's that's a 99% rate of quality in WWE with the 1% being WWE 2K being the negative. Because almost virtually, I don't think there's a really a bad game on the Nintendo Switch. Like I, I'm, I'm, I can almost say I'm confident to say that 99% of, of you know Nintendo Switch's games, their major AAA games or their major you know games, third party games, are all great. Even Mortal Kombat that just came out, which did the same format as WWE and uh, 2K Games is did by hiring a outside developer staff to make sure that the transition of the Nintendo Switch version goes in. That game, although not perfect, is still way better. It, it meets all the standards of what we expect out of a Mortal Kombat game. That is still right now one of my most played games. I love that game on the Nintendo Switch right now. Kudos to that team, and I gotta remember who the, what that team is that uh, was responsible for this because they did a tremendous job. And the new patch di- are, is helping out greatly with that as well. So this is a huge deal. Uh, WWE will continue working with uh, Ukes, and uh, as Hiromi uh, Chen has put it, they will never allow us to stop making these games. And you know why? Because there is nobody else but Ukes doing this game. <laughs> there's no there's no other wrestling game out there there's no other company out there that can really do anything of what they do a lot of it is the motion capture aspect a lot of it is also just the engine itself that they've developed over the years to do the, what they're doing there's i don't know any other there's i don't honestly there's there's really there's been other companies that have tried to do a, a wrestling game but they failed miserably uh, there was that five star game that came out years ago, but it, it, I mean, if you look at it, it's just awful. It's just absolutely awful. Um, the only competing company is Spike Chunsoft, which does Fire Pro Wrestling, but they're 2D based still. And is even though they're 2D, 2D based, it, it works differently. It works differently, but even still, I, I gotta say, I'm, I wasn't impressed. I was really kind of disappointed in the fire pro wrestling world game because of the just the visuals of it i don't know why or what they why they choose to do it but the visuals of the the, the body design it was just off it, it's a little bit off and I, I i don't understand why they did i, I would have loved it if they they did the original way that they used to do 2d design and pixel design but it just didn't look right. I, I would love for them to go back and do what they did. And I know that they were doing it just to make sure that these guys are able to do all the moves that they were killing off. But visually, it just doesn't look right. And it might look better on a Nintendo Switch, which I would always hope that they would put. But it's been a long time since it's been out now. And I don't think it's ever going to be on a Nintendo Switch. And that's To me, that makes no sense. And I, I, I mean, I can very well say it could be later on down the line. But I think they lost a lot of money not putting it on there. I, I just don't understand why they don't do that, but I digress. This is huge because now we're seeing, we truly are seeing, I, and I'm I'm way off on, I could be way off on this, but we could be seeing the downfall of, w, of WWE, which is sad in a sense because they're they're now entering the territory to which they, it's it's almost becoming poetic justice. They're doing exactly what they what they're. All former competitors have done it. It was WCW. They were making bad decisions. People, the morale was, is getting uh, crazy. Um, Vince McMahon has his own controversies. There are a lot of controversies within the company. And it's just getting so bad. It is getting... I've stopped watching Raw SmackDown. Uh, it's been a lot... I feel like I'm, I'm in AA. And I... Um, <laughs> more like WA. Um, but I've been with... I've been without watching... Raw and SmackDown for I think like maybe two almost going over two months going into three I still watch NXT and NXT is a WWE branded uh, you know show but they do totally different they do the absolute opposite of what the main roster is doing and they do it very well in fact I'm going to the live show tonight (laughs) that's in Philly at the Fillmore so um that goes to show my dedication to it. I will never, I will, as long as NXT is doing great shows, I will always go there. But 
as far as that, I I can't mess with WWE itself. I, I can't I can't deal with it. There's so many other options out there, you know, for me to check out and as well. So, um, but there you have it. I mean, we'll see. This is far from development, but we're going to stick to this as the uh, story develops. And I am looking forward to it. This is truly a resurgence of the wrestling industry in all aspects. So I'm looking forward to that. Last bit of news. I want to talk about a few games that's just coming out this week. Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Available now. I believe on a play, all, all major platforms. Switch, Nintendo, uh, PlayStation, and I believe Xbox, of course, as well. Xbox Live. Uh, for $19.99, there are nine Castlevania games. Two of them are original games from the Game Boy. Another one, Kid Dracula, has never been in America. This has been, for the first time ever, it's in the U.S. And you got uh, Dracula, um, you got Castlevania 1, 2, 3, and Super Castlevania from the Super NES. All that's in there. This is a really good game. If you're a Castlevania fan, you got to you gotta invest in this. This is really cool. I like it. I, I really can't believe that they're allowing you to play the old Game Boy games on there, too. And I I used to own the Game Boy games back then, but you're able to play them on there. It's pretty awesome. So all that's in there, and uh, plus a game that has never been in the U.S. before as well. So that's a really good deal. Another one, if you're a fighting game fan, which I am, especially when it comes to Arc System Works, the original Guilty Gear is out right now. They've been talking about bringing it out for some time and is here digitally for $9.99. I believe they do have a special on the original. If you get the physical, you get, a, I believe, an illustration book of some sort right there. So you got that. They got also Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R. God, can they ever stretch it out more? That one is for $14.99. It comes with 13 game modes, including online. The online now has spectator mode, which is awesome for those who want to compete there and watch as they uh, wait to fight. So you have that as well. Uh, and I got to give uh, enough credit to this. Capcom is has their games on sale this week as well. And tons of different games. If you haven't got it, all the Mega Man games are on sale. Uh, the Resident Evil or Biohazard games are on sale right now. The one game... And, and they're on. They're not only on sale, but it's like a, a flash sale. Like there is a for some of them are for like up to thirty and forty percent off right now. One of which I finally bowed down to get because it was forty percent off, and I'm like, I'm not missing out on this. Capcom Beat 'Em Up Bundle, which I got for eleven ninety nine. It comes with like seven game. I believe seven games that it comes out. Final Fight, Captain Commando, uh, King of Dragons, Knight of the Realm, Warriors of Fate armored warriors in battle circuit most of these games i've played three of these games uh, and that was final fight captain uh commando and just yesterday i played armor warrior for the first time absolutely enjoyed that game that game was a lot of fun absolutely a lot of fun now the cool part about this uh why this is cool and why you should jump at this for the price that they give it because it was 29.99 originally it's only 19 uh 11.99 jump on this you, you're not going to regret it if you play final fight this is the full game with all with Cody, Hagar, and Guy. And you go through the whole thing. Not, there's no quarter munching. It's just all free play throughout the entire game. You can set up, you know, the game in any type of way that you want. They also have a gallery of illustrations on air. If you don't have an illustration book like I do of the uh, of all of the uh, work that they've done in Capcom, which is, which is why Capcom is some of the greatest, because they actually... What made Capcom so great over the years is not only just the games itself, but the art. The art of Capcom. I got a book. I got a huge 30-pound book of nothing but Capcom illustrations that I got from San Diego Comic-Con, I believe, in, like, 2014. So worth it. Absolutely worth it. it. Their illustrations are some of the best artwork. They can do a gallery of nothing but, you know, works from Aki Man and all the really great artists that ever came to uh to capcom it's just so great but you have all those as well this is just awesome i never played king of dragons before knights of the round warriors of fate some of these games were on the super nes others were on the arcade so you're getting to play these some of these games for the first time and get to see what capcom is all about and why they were so cool and why they were uh, their legends in the industry always so I mean, it's just not just about Street Fighter or Devil May Cry or uh, some of the other games that they came out or Mega Man. You know, they've done a lot. I wish, I really, really wish, though, that hopefully sooner or later, somehow, some way, they come out 
and bring give us back Saturday Night Slam Masters one and two. I've never played two before, but I love Saturday Night Slam Masters. It was a really cool wrestling game that they came out. It was half wrestling, half fighting, and 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 beat 'em up brawl. It was a little bit of everything. Second one I believe was more of a fighting game, but nonetheless, I love Saturday Night Slam Masters. I hope that they find a way to bring that in as well, but or just make a new one. Hell. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that if they ever come out with that. They've come out with a lot of different libraries now. Hopefully they will. But all of that's available right now on the Nintendo eShop, on the PS, uh, on the PlayStation Network, and on Xbox Live, I believe. So go out of your way and check it out. And folks, that will do it for this edition of Select Start. Thank you guys so very much for taking the time to listen to this and supporting me and supporting everybody who's doing this. Hell, just everybody who's out there doing the thing and just... You know, having fun doing it. Just embrace people's fun. Just embrace it. I mean, if you go around being envious about what other people are doing, don't. It, you're, you're wasting your life. Just embrace it or do it yourself or work along with them to do it. You know, just but just keep supporting all of us that are doing this. This is awesome. You know, we work hard to have fun. Always and forever. So, folks, that'll do it this Sunday. Again, I may try to see John Wick this week and give a review but if not i do have a review i want to definitely check out and that is batman versus the teenage mutant ninja turtles i am going to check that out in full i've been trying to check it out but i've been interrupted like crazy so i'm gonna check it out in full give you my full thoughts on that whole entire thing along with whatever news comes this week in the world of our favorite fandom so stay tuned for all that and much more please support us on itunes stitcher iHeartRadio, google play podbean uh, TalkTimeLive.com, of course. And if you want to check us out on the ACMG Facebook group, you could go to Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash ACMG1 and check us out. We got so much more to go coming down the line leading into the summer and some great news coming and hopefully some even bigger news upon that great news from there. So stick around, stay tuned, and uh, you never know what's going to happen here at uh, Talk Time Live. So on behalf of myself, this is Dax Xavier Josiah saying, learn to let go, live life, and love all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. I am out of here. I will talk to you on Sunday.